right? We have the physical compute, physical storage, physical network. Then the next layer is the virtualization layer. So we have a virtual compute, virtual network, virtual storage. Then on the upper layer, we have the SDN controller, the VIM, Virtual Infrastructure Manager, where we can put OpenStack, Epic controller, Open Daylight. Then we have the management and orchestrator, like NSO, the Elastic Controller. Then this orchestrator orchestrate the whole solution, but how, as a user, you can consume the service? That's the service consumption. We can use web portal or product like Cisco UCS Director, even a ticketing system directly to send a request to the orchestrator. So we can have a complete SDN and NFV use case to answer the top three questions from the business leader. Okay? So far so good? Now let's see what is the output of the CCA survey. Right? Where are they now and do they speak SDN? So as a disclaimer, this was my personal initiative to run the survey. So it's not from Cisco, it's not from CCA program. More than 200 verified CCIE participated and they come from all over the world. The first question I ask, where are you guys now? What are you doing? Okay. Most of them work for software and technology vendor. Most of them work for service providers. And also the value added reseller or system integrator. Right? Any of you work on these three companies? I guess so, right? And then they fill up pretty much the whole position from CXO level to sales and marketing. The common job title is network architect and network engineer, obviously, right? And we have some CCAs who just passed recently, but we also have some CCAs who've been around for more than 15 years. And if you see this, where they come from, they come from United States and North America, Europe, and Asia. So I think the survey is quite representative, right? Then I ask questions. Are you aware about SDN and NFE? Do you see this in your everyday life? It might be too small for you, but I will read it anyway. So most of them said, yeah, I've been following about SDN and NFE story, but I don't see it in my current work. Some of them said that you are, we are doing piloting. We are even doing production with it. Many companies are still in awareness level. Some of them start doing the piloting and selecting the vendor for SDN NFE. But all of them understand the value of SDN NFE. The top three questions, they understand this. So there is a value of SDN and NFE. However, only very few claims that they are an expert in it. Most of them said, yeah, I'm just starting to learn about it somewhat fam familiar with it. Then I ask this, the next questions. Are you aware about how, how is your SDN and NFE base skills? And what I define about a SDN and NFE base skill is Linux and Linux virtualization, the network virtualization, VXLAN, EVPN, SDN, controller and overlay, OpenStack, Programming API and DevOps. Most of them said, yeah, they are newbies, especially in programming and API. And even if they have hands-on experience, it's limited within the lab. Right? So now we have some indication what kind, what, what kind of SDN best skills. But let's, looking at, let's look at the actual SDN solution by looking at how we provisioned the network in 2016 and how the SPs buy infrastructure. I hope it gives you idea what kind of skills required for SDN and NFE. So this is the end target, right? We have a full multi-fender end-to-end management and orchestrator. 
Here I'm gonna look at only two parts of the network. One is the data center, and the other is the CPE. Let's start with the data center first. How is data center today? With this SDN and NFE stuff. Let's look at the data center. Cisco provide three options for data center programmability. The first one is obviously the SEI, right? It's an integrated turnkey solution. The second one is programmable fabric. Basically, you can run open protocol on various type of Nexus platform, and you can use uh, VXLAN controller or even third-party controller. Then the last one is programmable network, where you can access the NX API of the Nexus, Nexus platform that you can build your own application on top of it. We'll go through it one by one quickly. First is SEI. It's really fully integrated hardware and software solution. We know this. Right? It's been around for some time, and the EPIC provides abstraction layer between the application profile and the network device. Let's look at it in action. So how we provision the multi-tier application in data center yesterday, it's common that our boss comes and says, hey, I have a new business requirement. Let's deploy multi-tier application, web, application, and database. And in our data center, that web servers, application servers, and database servers, they are connected using different type of network device, routers, switches, load balancer, firewalls. This is common scenarios, right? So okay, there is a new requirement from the business leader. What did we used to do yesterday? We translate this business requirement individually and manually. I mean, the network admin said, okay, so it means I need to configure my network device this way. The security admin said, okay, it means I need to configure my firewall device this way, right? The load balancer admin will translate this requirement as well. So they translate the requirement individually, manually, and sometimes they also provision the config manually using CLI over Telnet or SSH. How many of you are still doing this? Okay, <laughs> thank you for being honest. <laughs> that was yesterday, yesterday. Starting from today and tomorrow, this is how we're gonna do the provisioning of the multi-tier application. With SEI, again, the SEI provides abstraction between the application and the network device. You don't need to worry about the network device. Just focus on translating that requirement into application profile what we call service graph. So create this definition, okay, who's the consumer, who's the provider, right, and what are the devices in between? Okay, so we have firewall, load balancer, SSL, VPN, and so on, what are the policies? Who can ac access what, right? Focus on that, provide that information into EPIC controller, and EPIC will do the provisioning automatically. Okay, how if we integrate, oh, the EPIC provides full app caps, fault, configuration, accounting, performance, and security. It has this health score, capacity dashboard. Okay, it's great. Uh, how if we do the integration of ACI to OpenStack? Let's say you decided, oh, okay, I, I like ACI, but I want to use my OpenStack to consume the service. I want to use my OpenStack to create the service. How are we doing this today and tomorrow? The OpenStack admin is using the OpenStack console. Start by creating the application network profile using a group-based policy in OpenStack, right? Okay, so there is a three-tier application. What kind of policy? This information get pushed automatically to Epic. Then Epic create the same application network for, for, uh, profile that mirror the one in OpenStack. This step two and three happens automatically. The SCI admin just monitor the process. Now, when the OpenStack admin on the top instantiate the actual virtual machine, okay, it's time to start the web server VM, it's time to start the database VM, and instantiate that using OpenStack, this information get captured by the Epic because Epic needs to know on which compute node you start the VM. So the Epic will push the policy to relevant hardware automatically. You see the guy on the blue, he doesn't do anything. 
just monitor the process, right? Okay, it's SEI, fully integrated solution. That's option one. Let's look at option two. Option two is VTS, virtual topology system. Basically, you run open protocol like VXLAN and BGP VPN on your Nexus platform. So if you have Nexus 9K platform today and you don't want to run SEI, you can go with this VXLAN VPN, right? And Cisco has Cisco VTS controller. Now, let's just look at it, look, look this in action directly. We perform the same integration between OpenStack and the VTS controller. So that's the spine and leaf. That's the normal data center topology, right? We have spine and leaf, the top of the rack, okay? And we have Cisco VTS as the controller to manage the overlay, the VXLAN, okay? That's the OpenStack dashboard over there. So when the OpenStack admin, again, creating new networks, yellow VLAN and green VLAN, yeah? This information is captured by Cisco VTS, and then Cisco VTS assign the VXLAN ID to that new network, and then when the OpenStack admin instantiate the VM, the actual virtual machine, again, this information need to be captured by the VTS, because VTS need to know where the virtual machine is, so it can, create, it can push the configuration to the right top of the rack switch, the VXLAN configuration. So then we have the VXLAN tunnel between one top of the rack to another top of the rack. Then the VM can communicate with each other. That's the second option. Again, it's fully automatic. If you are the VTS network admin, you just need to make sure that you are checking the log to see all the transactions are working fine, right? That's the whole idea. With programmable network, perhaps you already have DevOps process in your organization using your favorite DevOps tools. You already have this, Puppet, Ceph, Ansible. You are using this to manage your servers. Fine, continue using that. And if you have Nexus platform, it has the NX API. So you can integrate this into your workflow. This is the programmable network. Three options in data center to program and provision the service today. Let's look at the CPE, the second part of the network, right? CPE, in many services situation, we usually ship CPE to customer premises. Duh, that's why it's called customer premises equipment, right? CPE. So we ship the CPE physically to customer premises. However, when we ship something like this, it could be a router or a firewall, it's a physical box running specific function, right? What happened if you decided, oh, I want to upgrade the performance, or I want to add more network function. Oh, you need to ship another box, or you need to ship additional box. So the idea here is, why don't we ship a simpler CPE, right, to run just a basic network function to connect these premises to service provider data center, where we can run more virtual network function there. And that's the idea behind Cisco VMS, right? Cisco Virtual Managed Services, you have flexibility in the CPE right now. Whatever you are using as a CPE, as long as it can create secure broadband internet to the provider data center. And in this data center, we can run virtual network function connected to another virtual network function, a service chain for that particular customer. Then the end user, it can use the self-service portal to request for new service or to manage their, their existing service. The request will be accepted by the management and orchestration layer. It's fully automatic end-to-end. -end. And this is the most important part because if you can automate it, if you can automate the whole process from beginning until the end, from the moment the new user wants to subscribe to the service, until we provision the service, if you can have this end-to-end -end automation, you can provide the service to virtually everybody, right? Even the small and medium business owner. So that's why it's important to have a self-service portal. And since now the virtual network function are run in our data center, in the service provider data center, we are more flexible. We can create a service chain containing only virtual router and virtual firewall for one particular customer. 
Maybe for another customer, he wants virtual router, virtual firewall, and virtual IDS, for example, or virtual web filter. But we are more flexible because now we are not limited to the CPE capacity. The CPE is simpler device just to connect to service provider cloud. So if you look at the manual of the management orchestrator of the Cisco VMS, starting from the portal, sending the request to the orchestrator, which is the Cisco NSO. Then we have the VNF manager. The orchestrator will tell the VNF manager, okay, somebody is asking for this service chain, spin up the virtual router, please. Spin up the virtual firewall, please. Then the, that virtual router and virtual firewall is actually a VM, right? A VM that is managed by the virtual infrastructure manager. In this case, it's OpenStack. And we, we have option to use SDN controller if we need to do programming as well for the virtual network or the physical network. Okay? Let's just look at this directly. So that's Mano Engine. We install it in SP Cloud Data Center. It has the NCS, NSO as an orchestrator. It has the Lifecycle Manager and OpenStack. Okay? Then we have a new customer coming in using the self-service portal. Said, okay, I want to buy new service chain. I need a CPE on my premise, then I want to buy this service chain containing virtual router, virtual firewall, and virtual load balancer. The request received by the orchestrator, or it could be the admin of the service provider said, okay, let me provision new service, right? They also have their own portal to do that. So the request get accepted by the orchestrator, then the orchestrator inform the lifecycle manager, spin up the service chain, right? Spin up the, v, the, the, the VNF, because the VNF is actually a VM running on OpenStack, managed by the OpenStack. So then the, the VNF manager will inform the OpenStack manager, and OpenStack start spinning up the virtual machine. So we have the virtual firewall, virtual router, virtual load balancer, and so on. Then the orchestrator push the configuration automatically, depending on the service profile that requested by the customer. Okay, then we have a complete service chain here. Are we done here? Are we done? Not yet. Where is the CPE for the end customer? Right? The customer is connected physically. So we need to ship the physical CPE still. But remember, it's simpler CPE. So we ship the CPE to customer premises. It comes with what we call day minus one config. So it's not pre-staging, so you don't put the pre-configuration before, it's just a small script to call home, to connect to the orchestrator. Then the orchestrator will know that the CPE is active, then the orchestrator will push this configuration to the CPE. So now the CPE can create a secure tunnel to service provider data center to access its service chain. Now we are done. So we can send the information from the orchestrator to the billing system. Yeah, start charging the customer. You see, end-to-end -end is fully automatic. There is no human involvement, right? And just want to show you the end-user portal look. So this is the end-user portal where you can select the service you want to buy, and then you check out, fill up your uh, physical location, and they will ship the CPE. After this step, everything will be done automatically. No involvement from the network admin. So obviously that management and orchestration engine, we need to run it on something, right? We need to run it on our infrastructure. So usually we run this on network fun virtual function uh, infrastructure, NFVI. If you go back to the Etsy reference architecture, when customers are buying NFE today. They can come through multiple ways. For example, after the presentation, you might come to your Cisco representative and say, hey, I want to buy that Cisco VMS. Okay, so you buy the use case. Let me buy that Cisco VMS. So you buy the use case, then the hardware, the virtualization will, will come as a package. Or maybe you work in operation and say, hey, that looks pretty cool. I want to use the management and orchestration engine to manage my existing network. That's also possible, right? However, the third one is something 
for our discussion today that you might come and say, I want to buy new virtual infrastructure. This virtual infrastructure should be able for me to run any use case that I want. Okay, that's the NFEI. So according to Etsy, NFEI is only that box, the physical resources, the virtual assistant layer, then the virtual resources. However, when customer buy NFEI, usually they say, hey, we also need the manager, right? So they include the manager. And usually it's open stack. It can come with additional SDN controller if we need to manage the virtual network or the physical network. And this is the new definition of NFEI is being standardized by open NFE organization. So just to give you example, that Cisco, for example, we have the NFE solution where we work together with Intel and Red Hat. So it runs on our compute platform, it runs on Intel, then we use virtualization layer from Red Hat Enterprise Linux, running KVM, except for the Cisco, uh, for software defined storage, and can be like OVS or Cisco VTF, OpenStack, the monitoring, as well as the unified management. And the physical, uh, appearance can be like full rack pod or half rack pod or even what we call micro pod for uh, NFEI brand solution. Okay? So, after about 50 minutes, I think it's a good time now to see some demo. Right? Okay, so we heard you, Himawan. Yeah, it's talking about SDN, NFE, how you buy infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. How can I learn all this new stuff. Let's look at the demo of all-in-one virtual machine. This is not created by Cisco, by the way, so please don't ask your Cisco representative how to get this or you know, how to get the support and so on. This is created by my colleague here, Riftadi. He's here with us. He's gonna help me doing the demo, right? He works for a SDN startup in Indonesia. So basically the idea is he created this all-in-one virtual machine running on running on Ubuntu uh, operating system. And inside the virtual machine, there are several components. One is the physical network. We simulate this with Cisco IOS running on top of Dynamips. I guess you are familiar with Dynamips, right? So we simulate that's a physical network. And we have the open flow network simulated by Mininet and we have a SDN controller, Open Daylight, to manage the open flow network. And we have the VNF, the virtual router, open source virtual router, running as a VM on the OpenStack KVM. So OpenStack is the VIM for the compute. Then he wrote a software, the, the SDN manager, written uh, on Python as the network manager on the top, okay? Then there is a web portal. So the idea is with a single click, of the web portal, you can tell the network manager to provision the service, the network manager will inform the OpenStack to spin up the virtual router, the VNF. At the same time, the network manager will inform the open daylight to provision the point-to-point -point network between the physical network and the virtual network. So the physical router, which is iOS running on Dynamips, will be able to connect to the virtual router on OpenStack through the OpenFlow network, and the physical router will be configured automatically, and we're gonna put the OpenStack configuration on both, uh, uh, OSPF configuration on both physical router and virtual router, right? Let's see, let's see how it works. So let's start from yeah. the web portal. It's a simple web portal, as you can see. It's just showing provision and deprovision. Right? <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> then let's look at the network manager. The network uh, let's go to the network manager. Yes, so. Yeah, the network manager is a Python script written by him, right? Doing all this function. Then let's look at uh, the OpenStack. Let's look at the OpenStack dashboard. Yeah, so in this so. OpenStack, you see there is no instance right now. Going on. This is this, this is the state of the network, right? What else we want to see? Let's see the open daylight uh, UI. Yeah. yeah, this is the open daylight UI. 
to show that the, the open flow network simulated on mini net, right? So ev everybody understand what we are trying to do here, right? Single click on the web portal will tell the network manager, the SDN manager, which is a Python script, to tell the open stack to spin up the virtual router, open daylight, and put the configuration on physical router. There is a tricky part here. When you spin up the virtual router, it will take time to boot, right? So while waiting for the booting, the network manager or the SDN manager will keep pinging the virtual router. And once it come up, it will push the configuration into that virtual router. So let's see how it goes. Let's put the... Wait, uh, we also have some more stuff that Hemawan didn't mention. We also have the open daylight lock here, so we can see what really happened in the background. And then we also have the virtual, uh, sorry, the physical, physical router, router which, simulated yeah. by using the Dynamips. Yeah, let, let's look so at the, the initial config to see yeah, that okay. it doesn't have any config other than the interface configuration. It's, it's only have a simple yeah. IP configuration. Yeah. I think you all guys know all of the stuff. Yeah, there is no, no OSPF configuration. routing configuration, right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's get it <laughs> into let's action, okay? Okay, let's try this. I hope it works. <laughs> okay, I will click the provision okay. button. Provision, let's yeah. check the open daylight and the IO manager. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, it's coming. Yeah. So this log the first shows thing that the, the manager is pushing the configuration to uh, uh, the physical R1, router. The yeah. physical router, yeah. The open daylight, it creates a new virtual tenants and also a new fee bridge, yeah. the tenant one, and assign the uh, interfaces. Uh, so basically here what we do is just, it creates a new instance in the open stack also. Yeah, let's look at the open stack Open stack does work. Yeah. It was empty and now, oh. oh. <laughs> there is a VR one. There is a VM. There's a VNN. Okay. Yeah, and again, they, like they, I said, it takes time to boot. Yeah, it's, it's still booting, as yeah. you can see from the console. Yeah, it's still booting right now. So maybe it will take several yeah. minutes for it to get. We can look at the IO manager again, oh, yeah. uh, the log file in IO manager. Yeah, okay, so this is, this is what, what I mentioned, okay? So the IO manager is acting like the PNF manager as well. It monitors the life cycle of the virtual router. While the virtual router is still booting up, it will keep pinging, right? And once it comes up, it will push the configuration to the virtual router. So we will have physical router configured with OSPF. Have we configured it? Let's see the R1. Oh yeah, okay. It was empty. Oh, there is interface loopback. You can see it sure. happened. We didn't do anything. He didn't type the config, right? See? Oh, okay. Okay, there is a router OSPF configuration yeah, on the physical router, but again, the physical router configuration is done. The open flow configuration is done to provide for to point, uh, point to point between physical router and physical virtual router. But now we still need to wait for the yeah for the instance to for the instance to comes up. Okay, so yeah, let's go back to the presentation while waiting yeah. for the virtual router here. So everybody's clear, yeah? That single click number one send the request as a REST API to, using REST API to the uh, network manager, which is basically just a, a software written in Python. And then it will inform the open stack to spin up the virtual router, inform the open daylight, and put the configuration to the physical device, this R1. And now we are waiting for this virtual router to come up. So the requirement of this all-in-one VM is minimum is four gig RAM, right? It's better to have a eight gig RAM and the size of the, of the file is seven gig, seven to eight gig, yeah? It's better if you can have two virtual CPU. Let's, let's see oh, if we map this. It's, it's already comes up. It's already comes up? Yeah. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, so. Okay. Here. So it took 30 multiplied by five, yeah. like two and a half minutes for the virtual minutes, routers so to boot up, okay? So now we see that the console is already active. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
So let's look at from the R1 because we are familiar with this R1 iOS router.